Humankind's effort to accurate time telling began a long time ago. In The Assembly Woman, by one of the greatest ancient Greek comedy writers, Aristophanes, there is a line saying, When the shadows ten feet long, then quickly be thine. Back then, a man's body was used as a pointer on a sundial. The sundials were relatively easy to make and resulted fairly accurate time telling. With modifications over time, they were the most popularly used timepieces until the 17th century. The characteristics of the shadow moving from the west to the east in the northern hemisphere have influenced the mechanisms of the watches, and it can still be seen today as the clockwise direction. Although the sundial were very useful, the sun was not always present when needed. It was a critical flow, ergo different types of timepieces were demanded. Instant clocks, candle clocks, hourglasses, and many other timekeeping devices were invented. Among the rest, the clepsydra, or the water clock, was the most accurate ancient timepiece. The word clepsydra comes from the ancient Greek meaning water thief. It was invented by Tisibius, a Greek inventor and mathematician. Its blueprint is quite simple, but clearly shows how it works. The water clock measured time by the gradual flow of water. It was the most accurate way of timekeeping until the 14th century, when the mechanical devices were introduced. Starting with the tower clock installation at the Basilica of Santo Sorgio in 1309, the 14th century was the first European boom of the mechanical clocks. In 1370, Charles V of France had a clock tower constructed in his palace. It was designed to strike at every hour, and at the same time, all the Catholic churches in Paris chimed bells accordingly. It must have been a magnificent moment beyond words. Countless hours and efforts were continuously invested in developing an efficient power source and improving the components of the mechanical clocks, although the results were all pain, no gains. Great ideas and designs had bogged down over poor techniques of the time. Until the 16th century, the tower clock relied on the sundial to set the correct time. It was a big headache. It was so inaccurate, the people of Paris even started to sing a song, mocking the clock every time it chimes. Poor clockmaking was due to, of course, the lack of professional clockmakers. The clockmakers at the time were mostly blacksmiths and whitesmiths who had little experience in horology. Development of the steel industry throughout the 17th century made it possible to miniaturize the mainspring, which then led to increasing demand for household and portable timepieces, just like what happened to the phone booth and the mobile phones. Unlike large public clocks, jewelers were most suitable and talented in making a smaller luxury goods. They were the leading group of training the master watchmakers. Augsburg, Germany was at the forefront of early watchmaking. According to a census report, there were 40 registered watchmakers in 1610, which were increased to 86 watchmakers in 5 years. The interesting thing is that the half of the registered watchmakers were not German. Thus, we can make a reasonable guess that Augsburg recruited talented technicians across Europe. In addition, astronomy and the age of exploration triggered great scientists like Galileo Galilei and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz to commence on studying horology. The big headache of the 16th century has started to transform into one of the greatest inventions in the history. The timepieces in the 17th century showed error up to 500 seconds a day. By using a spring as the main power source, and thanks to the improved regulating mechanism, the daily error was limited to 10 seconds a day throughout the 18th century. This is not much different from the accuracy of movements today.
This device uses a spring as the main power source. The movement of pendulum represents the regulating mechanism. Please enjoy the beauty of an art for a moment. It was manufactured in 1979 based on the blueprints in the past. Due to the science behind subtle difference in the length and the angle of the two poles, this piece of an art represents 24-hour power reserve with an error of 60 seconds a day. The invention of accurate timepieces was one of the leading factors of the age of exploration. The marine chronometer was one of the most important parts in the captain's cabin. Perhaps it may seem like a miracle that this ancient artifact is still perfectly functional. However, it has the accuracy that is similar to an automatic watch today. The traditionally heated blue steel hands and the power reserve indicator are eye-catching. Also, the way it is designed to maintain level while sailing is pure genius. Time adjustment can be simply done by opening it and easily wind it by a small hole at the back. If you are able to see the caliber working in the flash, it will probably leave you speechless. Finally, we reach to the pocket watch. At the time, the pocket watches were often extravagant and highly decorated. It was once a symbol to show wealth and one's place in the society. Later on, pilots and soldiers began to wear the pocket watch in a leather holder on the wrist like a bracelet for practicality reasons, which then developed into the wrist watches today. The first pitsman is reinterpretation of the moment of transition from the pocket watch to the wrist watch via modern vibe and technology. A small second watch is often misinterpreted as only a classical dress watch. Pitsman says no to the stereotypes and breaks the mold. The small second watch was not only used in the thick of a battle, but also as a daily watch. The watch should not be limited to one purpose only as it is full of potentials. This is the philosophy of Pitsman, and this is only the first step of Pitsman. Thank you.